We just heard about annuals for shade, and now we want to talk about perennials. So, of course, I had to bring Cindy Townsend in. And, Cindy, the older I get, the more I like perennials. Well, I love perennials, so I that's do. good. That's good. Um, the perennials, the reason that they are so uh, wonderful uh, for the garden is because they're a mainstay, and yet they mm -hmm. can be temporary if you need them to be. So you've got your mm -hmm. trees and your shrubs. You've got your anchor plants. And you can change these out, share them, and do a lot of other things with them. So I love the perennials, and, and they make a good stand. Well, let's look at what works really well in the shade. So let's start sure. over here. You've got some great options for us. This is one of the bones of the garden. This is a plum yew. It's a cephalotaxis, and it's almost, feel it, Jennifer, it's almost plasticky. Mm -hmm. um, and this is, for me, one of the mainstays. This is going to stay. It's, it's evergreen, and it's going to uh, allow the perennials to accent. Like here we've got a beautiful hookra. And it's in, in the gold hues, and it's got a bigger leaf. So, so what I really want to focus in on is the texture that the hoot grows can change in your garden. So you've got this nice softer texture, mm -hmm. and then the big leaf, the big foliage of this hoot adds color and, and changes up the texture a little bit. So I really enjoy that. And like we were talking about with the annuals, the brighter, more intense colors really makes a huge difference. It makes it pop a little bit. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people think that if they're in the shade, they have to have plain green and, and it's boring and no flowers. And hopefully today I will uh, disprove that. And here, right here, I want you to see this also. This is an ajuga. This is the chocolate chip ajuga. Hmm. It's on the downside of its blooms. But this is a ground cover, so you could either use this as a ground cover to add to your shade garden, or you could use it in a pot to trail over. A lot of people think they can only use English ivy. No. There's a lot of different things you can use. Well, the nice thing is, once the ajuga is done for the season, you could go take that and plant it in a flower bed. Absolutely. Or take little starts off and, and go yeah. with it. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Here's another form of ajuga. This is a cute one. This is one of my favorites, actually. It's called black scallop. And the texture of the leaves are a little bit darker and almost ruffled looking. So it has a little bit tighter, tighter look to it. And this is a really great workhorse for the garden. Actually, I've got this in mind. Uh, it's Pachysandra. Again, it's an evergreen. So, uh, and it, is, it gets flowers on it that smell just amazing when it's blooming, but it gets little white flowers on it. And then up here... Well, now, Cindy, let's go back to the Pachysandra for sure. just a minute. How close would you want to plant that if you really wanted to make it a good ground cover? You know, 12 to 15 inches. It grows pretty okay. aggressively and fills in pretty well. Um, I put mine about 12 inches apart because I wanted it to fill in really quickly. Yeah. Um, and I love look the glossy look that it has to it. This is new look. This is older leaves right here. Mm -hmm. So it always has a really beautiful look to it. And with that, we have the Ligularia. And every time I do a shake segment, I have to use my Ligularia because I absolutely <laughs> love it. It's got big foliage, bold character in the garden. It's got, this one actually is a leopard plant. Um, so it's got this yellow spotting in it that helps brighten up that shady area. And the best thing, if this wasn't enough, in the fall, you get daisy yellow flowers that pop up. And it's evergreen. So this one is an amazing perennial for the garden. I see Solomon Seal right next to this. I started this several years ago in my garden, and I have a great stand of it now. I really, really like it. Well, and don't you love the wonderful texture of it? Yeah. I, I love the wispiness, and as it colonizes, it fills in, and it has a real wispy, almost, I want to say grass-like, but not. It just has a really wonderful character to it, and I love these little bell-shaped flowers that are blessing us today. They are beautiful. Mm -hmm. they, they do this in the spring. And then right next to it, this is another shrub. This is another bones of the shade garden, but I could not resist bringing it in. It's actually a Mahonia, a compact Mahonia. And look at these beautiful yellow flowers that you get off of this. That's a big benefit in the shady garden, yeah. something bright. Something bright. Yellows mm -hmm. and whites always uh, brighten up the shady spot. Now over here we've got another hookra. And the reason I put so many hookras in here is because there's a lot of different colors of the hookras, and you can actually uh, go for color and, and make contrast that way. So the, the reds with the greens, and this one is actually Acanthus mollus, but the reds and the greens together really, really pop. So that's also known as bear's breeches, Yes, right? it is. Yeah. Yes, it is. <laughs> I have one of those, too. <laughs> Thank you for that, yes. And those then, are fun. Well, and this this is a new hookarella, this, this one next to it. It's got the red colors to it also. But the beauty in this is you've got these white flowers that are, are, are showing up today, which I really love. This one is a combination of hookra and tiarella that I've talked about many, many times. Um, and it gets a flowing character from the mm -hmm. tiarella. So you can actually hang this on a wall like I do or put it in a pot and let it trail over or use it as a ground cover. Well, and something I'm glad you're pointing out, 
you know, if, if you are using something that's a little darker, but you put it next to something that's brighter, it still works. It still works. It pops and it kind of plays off of each other, which yeah. I really, really enjoy. And then, of course, the ferns are amazing in the garden. And this one is a burgundy lace. It's, it's like the Japanese painted. It's a variety of the Japanese painted with a little bit more red in it, which really complements this hoopra here. Uh, they, this, the, the Japanese painted are deciduous. This one's ghost. It's lighter in color. There's mm -hmm. hardly any red in it. And this one next to it is actually an autumn brilliant uh, fern. And this one is evergreen and really adds a lot of texture to the garden. It has the cooler, the cooler the temperatures are, the redder it'll get. And the lamium here, it, that makes a nice contrast with it. I can just see that in front of a pond or something real relaxing. Isn't that beautiful? Mm -hmm. And I've seen some really nice stands of the lamiums. And here's some gold lamium uh, that really does add a lot. And again, it, it'll, it'll uh, dress up the area a little bit. And we were talking about yellow flowers. One of the workhorses of the shade garden, and I would do morning, sun, afternoon shade with this one, is Corydalis. This, this one blooms and blooms and blooms all season long, and it gives us these nice little yellow flowers. Great foliage texture. This one has a lot to add to the garden. And then over here, we have got a Japanese forest grass. And again, we've got the yellows comp complementing the reds and the billowy effect. Isn't that great? And mm -hmm. over here, I've got this in my garden on my wall. This is actually chocolate vine or akebia. Mm -hmm. And look at the leaves on that. That's, that's a leaf. It's a five petal leaf in a world position. And they get these little bell shaped flowers. Really, really wonderful. The peonies next to it are gorgeous. Aren't they amazing? Mm -hmm. This one is Bola Beauty. Look at that. And this one is Starlight. And these are grandma's favorite. These are things that you've got to throw in somewhere. The foliage texture is so wonderful, and then the blooms, when they have blooms, are just amazing. And then over here, we've got Digitalis, and the beauty behind this one, this one is Goldcrest. It's sterile. So because it's sterile and it's not going to produce seed, mm -hmm. it's going to bloom a lot longer for you. And I love, I'm already watching all the different breaks that we see, so it's going to be a nice full plant for us. And then over here, Bleeding Hearts. Look at that little heart-shaped flower. This one happens to be King of Hearts. That's beautiful. And then, of course, hostas and shade garden always work well together. There's some variegated hostas with a bold gold to it, and they work really well with the hookras. Is this Francis William? Or Actually, this close one to is it? Midwest Magic. So, mm -hmm. and it is very close to Francis mm -hmm. Williams. You're absolutely right. And then down here, we've got uh, uh, some in substance trying to come up. And then look at this uh, black mondo. The black mondo with the with the hostas is really, really wonderful. And again, like we talk about so many times, but it's good to keep this in mind in the garden, the difference in texture. You've got the fine texture versus the huge leaf of the hosta, the difference in color, and that's what really makes it work. So that means that you can use the darker colors in your shade garden if you put them with some gold or something a little bit lighter. Well, terrific. Cindy, thank you so much for oh, showing us so about these shady characters. You're and so welcome. Coming up next, we're going to talk Japanese maples with Martine, so stay with us.